For something more complex and interesting than a sine wave, we need to start thinking procedurally. We can break up the time represented by micros into smaller periods using the modulo operator, the percent sign. Here we're breaking it up into periods of 5 million microseconds, or 5 seconds. If we simply print out the time this period, then we will see a sawtooth wave going from 0 up to 5 million, then back to 0, repeatedly. We can break that 5 million into chunks, from 0 to 2 million, and everything else. From 0 to 2 million, we'll just have it be a constant output value of 1600 millivolts, whereas uh, after that 2 million is up, we'll have it be the sine wave, same as before. Switching back to printing the millivolt output value, we'll see something uh, much more complicated on our serial plotter. 2 seconds of a constant value at 1600 millivolts, then a little chunk out of a very slow moving sine wave. If we made the sine wave move faster, it might be more interesting. Multiply instead of dividing, and that should speed things up. 2 seconds flat, and then 3 seconds of an oscillating sine wave, and then back to 2 seconds flat. It just keeps repeating. Let's move the length of this period up from 5 seconds to 15 seconds to give us a little room to play. And then we can add in another zone after the first two seconds where we can have a square wave as our output instead of just a flat value. We used a simple if-else construct to do different things at different times within that shorter period. In the longer period, with multiple nested if-else constructs, we can do many different things to build a test time series waveform with much more interesting characteristics than a simple sine wave. Once again, we can use the modulo function, the percent sign, to figure out where we are within the period of time that we're, uh, we're working in and act accordingly. We join the time series in progress and see some sine waves. Then we start a new period and we see a flat spot at 1600 millivolts for about two seconds, then some square waves, then back to the sine waves until we've used up our 15 seconds. Then a new period starts with another flat spot at 1600, and the whole process repeats again. Now we'll add another if-else construct to produce a triangular wave after the square wave. That triangular wave is going way faster than I meant it to, so I think I'll have to slow it down by changing the constants involved. With a little more attention to getting the frequencies right, we could package this capability in a function and use it to provide known input when we want to test our measurement code, or use it as an output to see how hardware like a servo responds to gradual or very rapid changes in its control signals. Those triangular waves look a lot better. Now it's your turn to replicate this approach to generating time series functions with your own kit and your own code to see if you can get the same kinds of effects going.